We want to see you all over on YouTube, so check us out at Backyard Gardens TV to watch our podcasts and other gardening videos. Have you ever heard the term food security? Does, I mean, what is it? Are, is it in a vault? Do we hide it? Do we hide our food? How does it work? Is there a food bank somewhere? Well, let's break that down and, and see how we can apply this to our gardens and try and make our lives a little bit easier in the coming days. Right here on the Backyard Gardens Podcast. To have a good harvest, one must plant good seeds and must also use the right kind of fertilizer. The carrots have grown large and firm. How good they will taste. Welcome to the Backyard Gardens Podcast, where we talk about all things gardening. We're your hosts, Ben and Batavia, and you can find me gardening in the country. And you'll find me gardening in the city. Get ready as we dig deep into this wonderful world of gardening, where we learn to grow and grow for change. All right, gardeners, if you'd like to support the show, come join our community garden at Patreon. Uh, the link's below. And at breaking, breaking news, as of right now, if you sign up for a whole year, you can get 10% off that whole year subscription and you'll get access to two extra shows a month. The next Community Gardens podcast that we're going to release is going to be about our gardens. We're going to do our um, our garden update, which is full of information and full of apparently everybody loves to hear us and our struggles so we will talk about that but then we also talk about how we fix it and then we also have um play uh, polls that we release for you guys to put input for shows coming up and all that stuff so come join the community gardens and yes ma'am um for the record this is year three of the backyard gardens podcast with this duo or I guess trio, if you follow Leonard in. Um, and this is still by far, the uh, the garden updates are still my favorite type of episode. So for what that's worth. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go, everybody. But I got something I want to read to you guys. I thought it was very nice. Um, <clears throat> so our last series was about sustainable gardening. And we got an email. And I want to read it to you. So f- it's from... Uh, from a dear listener and it says first i want to say that i love 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 the podcast i look forward to every tuesday and thursday morning drives so i can go hang out with you secondly i just listened to the latest podcast in the sustainable gardening series about compost you were discussing purchasing bag compost and to just do what you need to do if you aren't making your own there was a mention of it coming in plastic bags i wonder why the compost industry hasn't pushed for paper recycling bag You could use the compost in the bag and compost the bag. I find it amazing that someone hasn't, has not developed that yet. I just started a compost bin earlier this year. There's only two of us in the house, but it's amazing how much can be composted from food scraps, coffee grounds, tea bags, and even shredded paper. My current pile is not big enough to cover my whole garden, but I'll benefit from it in one of my beds for sure. And I'll keep figuring out ways to expand it. Anyway, just wanted to pop in and tell you that the Backyard Gardens podcast rocks. Garden on, everybody. And I want to say, on this day, Poppy, I hope you have a beautiful day at work. Poppy, thank you for getting me right to the edge and pulling me back before (laughs) I started, you know, know, tearing and and getting all snotty in the nose. so. So I'm not even going to lie. When I read the name, I thought, because that's what my son calls my father. And I was like, why is my dad writing me this letter? <laughs> but it's not. So I hope it's not. But anyways, Batavia is sweet enough and most amazing. So she could give us the definition of food security. So we're all on the same page because this is going to set the table for the next four episodes or yeah, three, including this one. Yeah. Uh, So we wanted to create a baseline and we think this definition will do it. So this is from the International Food Policy Research Institute, the IFPRI, and you can just go dot org if you want to search it out yourself. And they have pulled the reference and definition from the United Nations Committee of World Food Security. So food security means that all people at all times have physical, social, and economic access to sufficient, safe, and nutritious food that meets their food preferences and dietary needs for an active and healthy life. Mic drop. There's more. And this is a part of the reason why we're doing these episodes. So over the coming decades, 
a changing climate, growing global population, rising food prices, and environmental stressors will have significant yet uncertain impacts on food security. Adaptation strategies and policy responses to global change, including options for handling water allocation, land use patterns, food trade, post-harvest food processing, and food prices and safety are urgently needed. So the IFPRI's work on food security includes a number of things, everything from analyzing cash transfers, promotion of sustainable agriculture technologies, building resilience to shocks, and managing trade-offs in food security. Finally, such as balancing the nutritional benefits of meat against the ecological cost of its production. So the end. I want to go ahead and say that since we have the um, explicit warning on the show now, son of a bitch, we're on. <laughs> we hit the mark because we just finished talking about sustainable gardening, <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I didn't even realize when we were talking about doing this that it would even bring in sustainable agricultural technology. So there's it's that. absolutely absolutely layered. It right? is right. So it's far more than you know. Do you can you go to the grocery store to get the thing you want when you want it? Like it's far more than that, right? Right. And as we go through this definition, I'm just going to make the announcements for the rest of the year. We're just going to talk about food security and sustainability because that's apparently. And I'm joking, <laughs> but <clears throat> it's it's interesting. And there's you know there's a lot to be said about that. Um, it's very stressful to read. So. You know, you go through it and I would argue with them. They say over the coming decades of changing climate, global, all that stuff. I mean, even the previous decades have proven mm-hmm. that we're, we're living in this right now and we've been in it. And it's not. I'm trying to think of a way to eloquently say it's not like all of a sudden we're all going to starve to death. That's not what we're kind of we're, mm-hmm. we're not trying to come into this episode, this series talking like that. Yeah, this not. isn't the kind of apocalypse post apocalypse series that comes next year. I've already got it lined up. Ben's already signed off on it. That's not this, right? <laughs> you know? yeah. um, so, but but it's still concerning. It's still something that when I read this originally, um, I felt empowered, right? Because it, I mean, it it can be a scary topic, right? We need food to survive, right? Um, but I felt empowered, and I I hope that some of the folks listening so these gardeners also feel the same way because so many of the things that this listed as concerns and things we need to be making adjustments for and addressing a lot of us are doing that you know in various ways right you know so this is not like day one for a lot of us yeah which again it 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 gives me some strength in knowing that i mean i think we can meet this challenge you know so I do want to, I have a couple of things I want to say. <clears throat> First thing I want to say is, and I'm going to be bold and I'm going to go on the thinnest limb I've ever stepped on in my life and say something. And that is, and I, I feel fairly like I'm in a safe place right now because mm-hmm. most people are gardeners or considering being gardeners. But if you depend 100% on the food system and the grocery store to get your food, the joke is on you. You know, it doesn't like, I mean, we've, we've sat here and we've preached for everybody that, you know, just growing something makes a difference. Just Mm -hmm. growing one little thing, supplementing, you know, we are not necessarily sitting here. I don't think we've ever really sat here and said, you need to grow all of your food and never go to the grocery store. I mean, we did a whole series about breaking that down and if it was possible. And, you know, that was, you know, that's always been like a goal of mine, like a dream. But I mean, let's face it, it's not how it works. And then the other thing is, you know, in the top part of this definition, I don't want to skim off the first paragraph at all where it says um, it means that all people at all times have physical, social and economic access to sufficient, safe and nutritious food that meets their food preferences and dietary needs for an active and healthy lifestyle. And that is just not true. That does not happen. That doesn't happen, but there's also this, and, and, and you don't listen to us to get permission to do a thing. That's not the way this show is set up. We don't do this show to get permission to do a thing or feel a certain way. But if you are, I give you permission. 
<laughs> but um, I love that that opening paragraph, that opening sentence speaks to f- that meets the food preferences and dietary needs. Right. So we talk, you know, on various episodes where we were talking about the August challenge from last year. And there's this idea of like, you know, shouldn't we all just be growing beans and potatoes? Right. Like it's going to stretch the longest. You're going to get the most out of the biggest bang for your buck. As Shit, far as time not my potato in- harvest. <laughs> oh, I'm going to be thin. <laughs> um, but I think this this is a great again, <clears throat> this is not um, kind of addressing some like world catastrophe that, you know, impacts us all. We're not every person doesn't stand the chance of starving. That's not where we are. That's not um kind of what we're speaking of. We don't want to make light of um, the struggles that various individuals have in the U.S., various countries have. So we're not making light of that. But I think it's powerful that this is acknowledging you have the right to access to food that you like that meets your dietary needs right you know you just don't need to grow the thing that's going to you know get you the furthest you know when it comes to you know uh, how much you can eat from that crop you don't have to do that right that's not what this is um so i appreciate them for we're kind of opening with that kind of setting the well, stage. Well, I don't, I don't want to. Um, and I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. I imagine that their job is to bring food security to light. Okay, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I don't know if that's true, but I'm gonna imagine, with the name of the International Food Policy Research Institute and all that stuff, that their job is kind of make sure that happens. And what sticks out to me is nutritious food. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, these people mm-hmm. have failed at that. So we have what's called food deserts and food swamps are big keywords, and they have driven the creation of this show and all the content that you've ever consumed for us. Those two terms is what drives the whole thing. And the food desert is, a, is an area that has limited access to affordable or nutritious food. So it's an area that doesn't, it's, <clears throat> you know, they're supposed to be like a grocery store per capita per you know how many ever people live in an area and when there's not it's usually in low income areas and minority areas where people are going to get food from dollar general they're going to get food from uh, gas stations and stuff like that and then there's food swamps which is an area where there's an abundance of fast mm-hmm. food, junk food outlets, convenience stores, liquor stores, and then outnumbers healthy food options. So it's the difference is there's more accessibility to food here, but it's all trash. Mm-hmm. And it's the same. It, it targets the same demographic of people. And it's an epi- it's a I don't want to use the word epidemic because I don't know if it is. But in America, it's a big problem. I mean, you can just drive down the road and you can see it. You know what I mean? So that's where we're going to enter the gardener and the gardener can make a change in that. You know, you can a community gardens for sure. Community gardens make a change in all of that stuff. So they're definitely, and I think um, there's been people in the past that have tried to kind of curb the food desert and food swamp problems and all that. And some of it has worked, but ultimately it has not worked, but there could be a time where you see where these things are necessary. You know, you see that gardens are necessary and farms and farm stands and farmers markets Mm -hmm. and all these places. They're necessary for people to come to because fast food is not designed for you to eat every single day. Mm-hmm. fast food is designed for you to be like, Oh, I'm driving down the road and I got an eight hour drive. Let me stop and get a bite to eat real quick. So I can keep going. That's what it's for. It's you're not supposed to go to McDonald's or Burger King every day. So affordable and nutritious. Those are the two words like hashtag those that crosses everything from the food desert to food swamps to, you know, when we kind of dig into food security and being a gardener, helps tremendously in being able to combat that to be able to kind of meet me here when it comes to to what's affordable and nutritious and we've done you know any number of episodes when it comes to how can you save money when gardening you know how can you garden for the cheap um and until i start growing you know 
um, deep fryers. You know? <laughs> like yeah. Most everything that I pull from my garden is is nutritious. Absolutely, when I pull it from the ground, let's say that. You know, now what I choose to do with it is, you know, is what I choose to do with it. But you're at such a great starting point versus a lot of the things that. Um, whether it's kind of packaged food, whether it's, you know, processed, whether it's already completely cooked when it comes to you. Um, and the idea of it being nutritious is questionable. I mean, I, my hope is that we're preaching to the choir here. My hope is that, you know, their, their ears listening and heads nodding because we're setting the stage for this series, but it's my hope that we're not saying anything new. You know, if, if, uh, we won't read this definition again, but if you go back to that website um, that I gave earlier, it there's so many pieces of what we talk about as a part of this show all throughout. Yeah. Right. You know, and it's, it's kind of like if we had three years ago started with that definition, we could have built like, you know, the next five years of episodes, but we actually naturally and organically, no pun intended, did it. Yeah. Which again, it's, it's, I think satisfying. Um, so, so yeah. So I want to, I'm going to tell a story real quick. Um, I'm gonna give you a piece of my history. When I was in my early twenties back in the day, <laughs> I, um, I packed up and left town like overnight and I moved to basically the area I'm in now. And, we didn't have any jobs. We didn't have any education. We didn't have anything. Um, so it was, you had to find a job. We had just enough money to get into a house, this, that, and the other we had. So we couldn't buy food. Well, at the same time, Wendy's came out with a dollar menu and then Mm. McDonald's was soon to follow. And it was legit. When you don't have any money, you can get a more variety of food for a dollar than you could at the grocery store at that time. Mm-hmm. So I lived off the dollar menus because not to mention access. Like if you have food from the grocery store, do you have a place where you can cook it or prepare it? Right. right? So let's be realistic, <clears throat> right? And I mean, and not on top of that. At the time, I didn't really know a whole lot about cooking. Mm-hmm. So there mm-hmm. was that. So you know, for the next couple of years, I basically lived off that stuff. Which then turned into some major health problems for me down the road. And it's all related to that. So that was, that's like a piece of my history. I mean, it was, it was so bad that I went into, I believe the statute of limitations is out. So at one point we were like, we want to, we want um, some vegetables. So I went and stole a zucchini and stuck it in my pants. And then my buddy's like, what are you doing? I was like, well, they're not going to ask me what's in my pants. So we just walked (laughs) out. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it was, it was like that bad. But when the dollar menu came out, there, there you go. So that was like, that was our life. I don't even know what the dollar menu is now. It's, I know it's not a dollar, but yeah. it's more than that. So, um, but enough of that, all that stuff. So what this, this was the definition portion. Now we're going to go through and we're going to break down the different areas of, you know, situations that can cause food security to break down. So let's go to this break, take a breath, get our composure, and then we'll come back and we will uh, break it down. Hey, everybody. Thanks for checking out the Backyard Gardens podcast. If you like what we're doing and you want to continue to support the podcast, head over to our Patreon page to sign up. You can also make a one-time donation using PayPal. Both of these links are in the description. With your support, we can continue growing and helping others in their gardens. See ya. We want everybody to have a garden and we're going to give you a chance to win free seeds every month. Head over to BackyardGardensTV.com and enter your email address to be entered in all of our giveaways. Good luck. All right. So we're going to we're going to focus in a little bit on these different. um, I'm just I'm going to call them calamities just because I don't know any other way to use it. Um, So let's. And that's a fun word for the record. (laughs) It is. It makes it seem horrible, though. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so we have to make sure we laugh every once in a while so it's not totally like but anyways changing climate so over the years you some people will notice a change in climate so do you believe in climate change batavia i do do you believe let me rephrase I, that do you believe in man-made climate change i do but i uh and i say i do and, and there's that kind of pause um only because 
I am the first one to kind of stand in and say, we had a role in this. I had a role in this. You had a role in this. Like, and that's right. just the way I look at life. Right. Like, um, so yes, in a word. So I believe in a secular climate change that has been influenced by man. So I believe that climate over time, will it's a little secular event. It goes, you know, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold. But I believe that we have influenced it to make it more drastic. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm not a denier or anything like that. And a lot of it is science. I learned about it in college um, after I got off the dollar menu, that is. <laughs> so, <clears throat> um, but, you you know, over the years, if you go back to your childhood, however old you are, um, if you're in, especially if you're in your thirties, you can probably go back to when you were a kid and think about how the temperatures and stuff were different. You know, you might have memories like in my area. I remember every year in North Carolina where I lived, we would get an ice storm every year or maybe a little bit of snow every single year. And then now we never, ever, ever get it. So like that, just that, you know, I, I know that a, that's a difference between mm -hmm. my childhood and now. So we can see that it's happening, not to mention all the drills. I mean, hell, as of right now, we're about to have a dangerous heat wave come to us next week. Mm -hmm. We just got out of one. We got another one coming. Last year, we had the same thing. And I believe it was Oregon. Shout out to all my people in the uh, Northwest. I believe they all had some like 100 plus degree days. That was pretty dangerous, right? Yeah. Yeah. I um. <clears throat> I can remember, I think it was 1995, where it was this like tremendous heat wave in Chicago, and it was a number of days, and it was so unheard of to be that hot that long, you know, and you know, the, the tragedy of like, you hear about the death count, you know, and so not to say my memory is the best, that's the last big kind of weather event. I don't count all of the snow, the snowmageddon, and all of that as weather events because I chose to live in Chicago. That's kind of a thing that we roll in. Although I believe there is, it's all tied in. Um, but I say that to say, like, we're talking many decades before now it feels like it's a norm. Um, so, I mean, I just... <sighs> yeah, I get, I get what you're saying, you know, and then you have the drought that's going on in the Southwest. I'm, I'm getting confused on the on our country you know you hear about monsoons in india and stuff that are more drastic than they have been um and i do realize that a lot of it um sometimes can be hype by news organizations because when we were younger batavia if it didn't happen in your area you didn't hear about it mm -hmm. and you only heard about it at seven o'clock in the morning 12 o'clock in the afternoon, mm -hmm. 5 o'clock at night, and if you were up at 11 o'clock at night, that's the only time you heard news. It wasn't a constant thing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think we're more sensitive to everything that's going on out there, but there's definitely a change occurring, and I believe that it's a slow change, and you can tell now because, every, I mean, look at the big push for electric cars now. You know what I mean? That didn't come yeah. out of, in, that didn't come out of like mid, you know, midair. That's something that has been planned and it is a problem, so... We'll see. Plus, gas prices are out of control, which factors into all of this as well. The water piece is one of my bigger fears. Uh, I don't think you and I have I've shared that with you uh, because there's so many things that we can do as gardeners right, to tackle the actual food piece. But you and I both know that without water, <laughs> that, that this, is, this doesn't come to fruition, right? So I just... Um... I don't know if it's out yet. It might be when this comes out. I believe it will be. I just did a video about saving water in your garden. It's like all mm -hmm. these free and cheap, easy ways to save water. And I opened up the video just like I did on the sustainable garden series. I said on there, you can make a difference. If you mm -hmm. save one gallon of water a day by following some of these techniques that are on there, and Batavia saves a gallon. I save a gallon. Johnny saves a gallon. April down the road saves a gallon. I mean, you can see it adds up. You know what I mean? But it needs to be on a more bigger scale. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because some areas are just running out of water. And it's been said that there will be wars fought over water in the future. Mm -hmm. You know, bottled mm -hmm. water is more expensive than gas. And people drink the shit out of bottled water. Which is the most ridiculous thing ever, unless you have to drink it, you know. But 
that kind of is what it is, but that's part of the chi- changing climate, you know? And then, mm-hmm. I mean, we can get very technical on this. I'm trying not to, because this is kind of like my gig, but <laughs> as the climate changes, the ocean currents break down, and as the ocean currents break down, then the flow of air around the planet breaks down as well. So it's kind of this big circular. Psych- I keep using this word secular today, big cycle that kind of is affected. So yes, this could be a problem, right? You there? I'm here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the next one is an interesting one. Uh, global, growing global population. Mm-hmm. What do you, you mentioned, th- you mentioned early on, you know, uh, in the opening, do we have a vault that we're putting our food in? I mean, you've heard about kind of the seed vault. Yeah. You know, and kind of some of the predictions on when that thing is going to run dry or run empty. Um, and that I have not heard anything about. Yeah. Well, I don't want to go too often to too much off into the thing I didn't prepare for for this episode. OK. Uh, but um, when it, it comes to like this, this f- growing population, we see it in almost everything. And it's not necessarily tied directly to um, food security, but our world is growing in numbers, right? You know, and so when you think at, think about some of the struggles that we are having with natural resources, I mean, as the young kids are saying nowadays, the math just doesn't math, right? And the struggle that with this topic is it oftentimes doesn't impact you directly. You don't feel it every day, right? Like the, <laughs> the population growing is it's when your family expands, that's something, you know, but when we talk about the sheer numbers, you know, the number of people are in the world, the, you know, what we have access to, to uh, feed and provide for those people now. And as we see these numbers rise, um, that teeters more so into kind of, you know, almost over the line of we're talking about apocalypse days in my mind. Um, however, I trust that it's in this description and it's pointed out here because it's much more relevant and much more possible um, and much more of an impact kind of in our current and future days. So as you said that, 200 babies were born. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm looking at the numbers. You can get a current world population numbers and watch it. Mm-hmm. It's at worldometers.info slash world dash population and since i've said that 100 babies were born (laughs) so we're currently at 7 billion almost 8 billion people on the planet um Mm -hmm. there's so i I told you this um when we were planning this out but i'm going to bring it up and i give everybody a little bit of homework there's a movie that came out in the 70s i think it's got charles charlton heston in it maybe um it's called soylent green s-o-y L E N T green. And I would recommend that everybody watch it. Um, before the next Thursday comes, find it, watch it. It's an old movie. So it's about all about, it's like a murder mystery, but it takes place in a time where in the future. And it may, we may, it probably was the year 2000 when it was filmed, you know, everything happened in 2000, <laughs> but it was a time when overpopulation had run rampant and the government was or some organization was feeding people wafers of soylent green that was made out of algae i believe it was and the way that they portrayed it was very interesting and it's i mean i watched it when i was in high school i had an astronomy teacher who was not teaching us astronomy apparently (laughs) and um it rung out in my head forever so I would recommend everybody kind of watch that because it kind of sets the stage of what could happen in the future. You know what I mean? And I guess the, the point of that is, you know, when we were talking about this, would the Calvary come? Well, the Calvary might come, but it might not be the way you want it to, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so that being said, if it got to that, like I still have my tomatoes in the backyard growing, you know what I mean? Like I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I might need some of that, some of them wafers, but I wouldn't be dependent on those wafers. Yeah. I will touch on this. If, if we make it down to, um, preservation, you know, post-harvest food preservation or processing, because there's a lot that we have kind of in the bullets we're taking out of this, but I'll say this quickly now, um, and I firmly believe this, the end result of what you're harvesting from your garden, obviously, is your primary end goal. 
<clears throat> but another reason why we support, you know, starting small and trying different things kind of year over year is you're building a skill set, period and point blank. I know more about growing food for myself than I did X number of years ago, X, X number of years ago. And yeah. it's only because I've been doing it. Um, so clearly there's a lot that you can learn through educating yourself as it relates to growing food and agriculture. And I would never deny that. Um, but you're missing something if you're not actually putting that into action. Right? right. I mean, you know, all of the stuff that you listen to us and watch us do in all these different places, a lot of it comes from experience that we've done over the years. You know what I mean? I mean, you can Google something and look it up, but until you try it, you don't really know. Mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? There's, and I mean, I know that there's two different types of learners. There's the people that can read it and understand it right away. And then there's the people that have to do it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then they can kind of pick it up. But I mean, we, we've joked before how we'll get comments in places and you can tell as soon as you read the comment that somebody Googled it and then copy and pasted it and put it up there. And you're like, mm -hmm. come on, man, you didn't even try it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's like, over the years of us gardening, you know, for me, it's been of my own garden now. I think we're at like year 15, maybe something like mm -hmm. that, 16, 14. I don't know. But all those years, I have applied and learned different things that I now share with you out of my experiences. So that's kind of, you know, that's part of what you were saying is like, you got to just you got to just do it. You know yeah. what I mean? And when we talk about, again, my favorite, the garden updates, which you'll be able to check out on Patreon, uh, if you join us and become a patron, um, a part of what you mentioned is we talk about things that didn't go well for us, kind of, you know, potential fails, right, struggles. And you're talking about well over a decade of growing experience for both of us. And we're still kind of at it, you know, we're yeah. still, there's still stumbles, you know, there's a bunch of things that almost every year is kind of smooth sailing. Um, but there are a bunch of things that just go beyond any person's experience that you have to face. And so without doing it, you, you don't have an opportunity to kind of tuck that experience and lesson and, you know, kind of ability to revise that approach. You can't tuck that into your toolkit, into your kind of growing knowledge vault. Um, I tried to sneak vault in there for <laughs> another use. Um, and so, uh, I beg you not to listen to this episode in this series and think that you're behind. You're not. Right? You're you already know. ahead of everybody else. Absolutely. Absolutely. <clears throat> because, and the thing is, is even if let's say you, that you're listening and you don't have a garden right now, you're still ahead mm -hmm. because you're building that knowledge base and hopefully you will apply what you learn and you consume to yourself, but you're still ahead because I know people they don't they don't care about growing food at all. And I also know people with four hundred dollar a week grocery bills that buy the same things as us and we're down to about two hundred. Mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. Which brings us directly into the next thing, which is rising food prices, which we are yeah. all living in right now. Right this second, each and every single one of us is dealing with and I mean it's worldwide. At this point, inflation is at an all time high. It's at 8.6%. Um, that number came out a couple days ago. So that is across the board. And food prices, everybody I know complains about two things food prices and gas prices. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they're both related to each other. So rising food prices, I mean, will it get to a point where you can't afford to buy food? You know what I mean? Yeah, there is. Don't get lulled into this idea of uh, we complain the first month or two. And this is how it oftentimes goes. Right. And then we settle in and we, you know, move some things around financially. Maybe we start to adjust what we're consuming. And then it feels like a norm for you. Like this is a norm, the new norm, if you will. Um, and while inflation is a thing across various countries, like it's going to happen in time. My favorites are like the price of eggs today versus in 1960. Right. You know, but I'll also kind of 
people's incomes today versus 1960 are different as well. Um, but don't get lulled into you not looking at this with some sense of urgency, right? Um, because you have found some, you know, made a way, way to make this thing work. You know, you're still able to, if you're a meat eater, you know, eat a steak once a month or something, right? Um, the more we continue to pay these exorbitant prices, the more it oftentimes feels like a norm for us and the less likely that some of us are into taking action to get yourself into a different and better place. Um, yeah. So this, I know what you're talking about because I've seen people talk about the price of eggs now versus, you know, whatever date, but mm-hmm. they're now going back and saying the price of eggs today and the price of eggs a year ago mm-hmm, and how much mm-hmm. they've gone up. Mm-hmm. And I mean, we don't talk about this a lot. And I mean, basically, the only reason why I don't on YouTube and stuff is because I kind of I've did a couple of videos about it. And I, I kind of saw like loud and clear people don't really want to hear about chickens. But raising your own chickens is very cheap and you get a lot of food from them. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of different, you know, a lot of variety, a lot of nutritious food that meets food preferences and, you know, nurtures a healthy, active lifestyle. So, you you know, that's something that you can add as well to this. But rising food prices is a real thing. Inflation is crazy. And, you know, we started this whole situation that we're here in the COVID pandemic, you know, and I'm referring to the podcast. Like we really Mm -hmm. kind of when COVID hit, you and I kind of ramped up automatically on this and it just kind of worked out that way it wasn't like we were targeting covid or anything sure Mm -hmm. but that's when and people were saying the inflation is going to rise inflation is going to rise they're killing the economies blah 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 they're giving money away they're printing money this that and the other all Mm -hmm. that good stuff and it was just rising and getting higher and higher and now they can't stop it and we're seeing it across the board and they i just saw something the other day that um the average credit card debt in america this year has gone up by eight billion dollars or something like that because people are using their credit cards to supplement their you know gas food whatever so thinking about that like this is another thing that can affect our food security and just understanding like this is the easy one because we're here yeah we're in it you know, and I mean, it wasn't too long ago where we were sitting right here, you know, as a couple of years ago, we were talking about, you know, I, I remember having an episode and we couldn't get to the grocery store. There was no food coming into the grocery store because things were shut down. I remember drinking my last soda and saying, this is my last soda. I'm not going to be able to get another one. I'm going to enjoy it. You know what I mean? Because I couldn't go to the grocery store and get it. It wasn't available. And there's still products that are just not available in the store, you know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. now there's toilet paper, but there's that. <laughs> I, I feel like, um, there's, there's something to be said around kind of the cursory. We don't want to scare you. Right. Yeah. Um, but I'm scared, right? Like I'm not waking up in cold sweats, like not that level of scared. Um, but I am generally when it comes to this, I, I want to have enough. I want the people that I love to have enough. I want my neighbors to have enough. I want people in general to have enough of what they need. I'm, and I'm speaking very, very general. Um, and if I go back to affordable and nutritious, even before we get to kind of this is the decade that this whole food security thing completely blows up before we get there, we already know we're coming into this and struggling period and then you add these other factors in right and the question becomes do you sit in a corner you know because of fear and let that overwhelm you right and basically do nothing you and i talked about this before i I think it was around um kind of the idea of global warming and and climate change and and someone had commented to you or this is in some conversation um, I think, you know, that person personally, it's like, well, people, someone else will figure it out, you know, kind of the smart people, you know, the scientists, like they'll figure it out. Right. Yeah. Um, and almost as if to say, like, I can't do anything. And I was talking about um, an item for work and there is something to be said about feeling like you have a hand in a solution. 
Right. Um, and I feel like, again, going back to you, what you do, what I do, what gardeners do. I mean, hashtag empowering and useful and hashtag beneficial and hashtag. I'm going to go on that branch, that thin branch with you. Um, and I'm going to make an appointment for when I fall, but I'm going to go on that branch Those and branch say, hold both of us now. Yeah, well, <laughs> 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 Food prices ain't got high enough yet, L- but go ahead. L- Litter going to be on this show by himself <laughs> because we're going to be in traction. <laughs> yeah. Um, and life saving. Yeah. You know, so, um, if I go back to affordable and then focus on nutrition, nutritional, you know, if I go back to, um, you know, to, food that will help access to food that will help your dietary needs that will you know help you manage your dietary needs i absolutely believe that there is healing in food can i give you um some hard financial data about growing your own food real quick absolutely you so can. um you know we've, we've discussed many times on the show that people generally eat the same things so mm-hmm. a lot of times when you go to the grocery store generally speaking it's the same things that you buy you go down the same aisles you get the same Mm -hmm. product some things may come and go ebb and flow you know what have you um i I had a conversation with my wife earlier this year you know we regularly talk about this kind of stuff Mm -hmm. um and which is one reason why we were more prepared for the pandemic than a lot of people were because i kind of keep my eye on this stuff but i told her i was like look food prices are getting very high um i need you to keep in mind the garden because a lot of times she'll go to the store and she, she'll she buy stuff. I'm like, well, why'd you buy that? We're growing it, you know? And she wouldn't realize. So she's like, okay. So every time she goes to the store, she says, what's coming out of the garden this week? Mm-hmm. And so come I said, on, come on, somebody. So I, yes. said, I said, you know, this is like a couple months ago. I was like, all right, so we're going to get kale, lettuce. Uh, we got a couple turnips. We're going to get a head of cabbage. You know, you know, I gave her a whole list of stuff that we were going to get. And she went to the grocery store and when she came back, I said, how much did that affect um, the cost of the groceries? And she said, it lowered our bill by $75 just by us planning what to eat out of our garden Mm -hmm. and organizing our meals around it. It saved us that much money. So going back to building skills, right? So the act of starting seeds, the act of planting, the act of nurturing your garden, the act of maintenance and the rinse and repeat, like those were the skill sets I was speaking of earlier. Um, and obviously I mentioned, you know, the idea of, um, you know, food um, preserving and and things, but right in the middle of that, and it doesn't come natural for everyone. It doesn't come natural for me. Um, having an opportunity to kind of practice how to combine what's in your garden, right. With what you are going to the store and purchasing, which you are going to the farmer's market and picking up. Right. You know, so being able to have some at bats with that, right. You know, before the, we still have the explicit label before the shit hits the fan, right. Being able to have that experience and continue to build on that experience is critical, so I was just while you were talking, I was thinking to myself because you brought up starting seeds. I was counting in my head how many plants, vegetable plants I have growing. I have 120 different vegetable plants growing in my garden right now. Um, I did not include individual carrots. I just counted those as one because mm-hmm. that would be, you know, that's just stupid to do that. <laughs> um, and the cost for me to do that was 60 bucks. And I will have that for years. Not to mention, hold on, I just got my collard seeds off my one plant. No less mm-hmm. than 15,000 seeds came off of it. I'm, I'm telling you, I got to weigh it and see because I was impressed by how many seeds came off of it. Mm-hmm. So just by doing that, you know, we're saving year after year after year. You know, I'll have three years worth of seeds because I think after three, four years, they kind of get a little bit less viable. Mm-hmm. Unless... Unless I put them in the refrigerator, which mm-hmm. we might play around with that a little bit, but you know, or just, if you again save, not you don't save the seeds next year, but maybe the year after you save kind of the fresh seeds that are produced. So just real quick, a small laugh break. I saw you, and I could tell you were counting, and I knew <laughs> if I didn't stop where I stopped, you were gonna like pull out your fingers and toes. Like <laughs> I was counting on my fingers. I had both fingers up, and my eyes were rolling in the back of my head. Yeah. 
It was kind of tough. And I may be a little light on the number. I'm, I would be lighter on the number than I should be probably. But just to put that into perspective, you know, mm-hmm. 60 bucks for all of that. And that doesn't include the fact that I also bought turnips and stuff that I'm not even growing right now. So there's that yeah. as well, you know. Um, no, I, I mean, I go back to the conversation we had earlier this year where I was like, I, I didn't even grow this because I got tired of eating it. But mm-hmm. there's that. Mm-hmm. Um, but we, we do need to move on from rising food prices. We're all living it right now. Um, you all feel the pain and my heart bleeds for everybody. And my heart especially bleeds for people who cannot have a garden. But my heart does not bleed for the people who can have a garden and choose not to. You know, the pandemic hit. My neighbor came to me and said, well, I don't need to worry about growing food. You're growing it. And I said, man, you're not coming in my garden. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, that's just I can't support that. You've got plenty of area to grow. You need to figure that out. Mm-hmm. I was like, dude, you're living across the street from somebody who does gardening for a living. Like, you have no excuse not to grow food. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> I, mm-hmm. I give myself to those people. I'm available to help them and to mm-hmm. answer questions and all that. Bless you, mm-hmm. by the way. Thank you. <clears throat> and this is a part of what we do when we hit record. You know, we release episodes on Tuesdays and Thursdays, right? Um, obviously, you know, some have told us we're a source of entertainment. And you'd have never get, got me to believe that when we first started. Hell but, hey, no. I'm, I'm going to roll with it. Go for entertaining, it. Entertaining, right? Um, but, you know, we've also gotten feedback on, you know, informational right you know and how about keeping these things on you know kind of at the top of mind i think that's really important you know i i love to make a list i don't have a notebook that i make a list in which means my lists are everywhere yeah and i say that to say it's easy to get distracted the number of distractions that we have access to That's, you know, kind of a phone away or any number of things that are happening in your life. It's easy to be able to put this thing off and say, okay, next year. Okay, next year. Okay, next year. Well, you do have a notebook because I bought you one for Christmas one year. Uh (laughs) I don't commonly use a notebook. Right. (laughs) So let's talk about environmental stressors. Um, Man, that's a that's a very broad subject, I think. Um what would be an environmental stressor, do you think? I don't know. Let me think about that for a second. Oh. I mean, I think that I, I think that when we go back to kind of the change in weather patterns, right? You know, yeah. so if you look at um, by the time we get to this episode when it's released, I probably would have harvested all of my broccoli. And this is going to be a sneak peek as part of the garden update. And baby, I actually had garden broccoli like heads were produced right i'm probably still gonna have some cabbage in the garden um but while this isn't necessarily kind of the shifting of the environment and the stress associated with it the weather absolutely impacts it you know so i planted these things in the most not ideal time right and my plants are stressed my garden is stressed because of it um and so it's not to be lost on me that um, it's not all by your hand. Let's just be realistic. And that's not a throw out to, you know, Handmaid's Tale. There's something, something, there's a line in there somewhere. That's not what I'm connected to. But it's not all of your own doing, period. Yeah. You know, um, you obviously can make better decisions as far as what you plant to try to work around, whether it's, you know, droughts, you know, whether it's extreme heat, you can make decisions as a gardener. Um, But I also lean back into, it's great to be able to know what, how a thing grows and what happens with it when things are calm, when things are normal, if you will. Yeah. And that helps you better address it when things ain't. Yeah. I mean, you know, I could not imagine, and I, I think the community has, you know, kind of labeled themselves pandemic gardeners. I cannot imagine jumping into something like this and saying, I'm going to figure it out. I need to figure it out right now. Right now, I've got to figure it out, you know, because that would be incredibly stressful Uh, just by starting something today Mm -hmm. and then moving over in the next year and starting a new crop and each year trying something new and fitting those patterns. You know, you're always building onto this base you need to have a, a strong yeah. foundation yep i mean let's face it everybody's foundation most most everybody's is a tomato and that's a good one to have a foundation with because it can be tricky mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm. um we've been you could quote us 
in the early days as saying gardening is easy. All you need is dirt and a seed and water. That's not true. Okay. I, we were wrong about that. We should not have said that because it's not that easy. It's, it's an, e- it's an easy concept, but then it's what after what comes after that is the hard part. You know, it's, it's to keep that plant growing mm-hmm. and keep it going year after year after year and, you know, feeding it and getting the harvest you want and managing the pests and all that. You know, there, there's a lot of times where we sit here and we plan these episodes out and we're like, look, we don't want to be all doom and gloom. You know, we don't want to just talk about pests and diseases and all that stuff. But that's a big part of what gardening is, is managing that. I mean, I remember I was watching an episode before I quit watching it of... um the walking dead and they were like, I remember it opened up and they were starving Mm -hmm. and they had come into somebody's yard and there was a garden that had just, you know, over the years just kept growing and they were pulling tomatoes off of it. And it was like heaven to them. You know what I mean? So there's, there's that, you know what I mean? There's that part of it where it's like, there's something fresh where, you know, you don't have to eat dog food that night. My old boss used to joke about that, but, um, So environmental stressor, another one, and I don't know if this is an environmental stressor, but this is something going on right now um, with the war in Ukraine, which is terrible. Um, Apparently, they grow the biggest portion of the world's wheat and Russia has taken over the um, wheat fields and have burnt them. And so they're predicting in the coming years to be like a catastrophic food system failure over this wheat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know much about it, but it was eye opening to hear that because that's something that goes so in line with what we're talking about, where it's like it's not today. Yeah. But in a growing season, you're going to feel the pain down the road. Yep. You know what I mean? I mean, how many times have we said like how many, you know, have you been driving around and you see a squash farm or a tomato farm. Like you always see like corn, soybeans and wheat. Like that's mm-hmm. like the real common mm-hmm. one. In my area, it used to be um, tobacco fields. Now they don't have those. So, but you have all of that to kind of combat and deal with. So it's, it's, I've, I've come across a couple other farms. I, I was driving down the road the other day and I saw a watermelon and a CBD farm. Super <laughs> weird, but it was cool. Um, they have some nice ass watermelons out there too. To- Shout out to those that um, grow any number of things for medicinal purposes, right? You know, whether it's herbs, like we talked about in the earlier series, whether it's marijuana, whether it's something in between, right? Because um, we clearly talk mostly about food and, and, um, and, and herbs and things and fruits on this podcast. But when we're talking about security, right, let's just be realistic when it comes to doing things that will help you lead a happy and healthy life. Right. You know, there's a reason why I grow chamomile, echinacea and calendula, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. rosemary, Mm -hmm. thyme in my garden. There's a reason why I grow all of those because those are medicines. Mm -hmm. Um, Mint was a big one. I don't need it right now, but if I did need it, I could grow it again. That was, those are all big medicinal plants and that's why I grow them. It, I, I wish that my state would be like, you can grow your own cannabis. Mm -hmm. I'd be good to go. I'd be good to go. I'd have every piece of medicine that I need, but Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't need like full blown THC, but the, the low end stuff, that's what I'm into. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, anybody that does that, you know, good for you because you're taking it one step further. But, um, yeah. So the environmental stressors, I mean, you have the weather, you have water, you have all of these different things and it's stuff to remember that it's not going to be the right here, right now. It'll be felt yeah. down the road. That's really important to see. So as you hear these news reports, don't think to yourself, oh, okay, well, it's not happening now. Think what's it going to be like next year? What's yep. it going to be like in a month? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I gave the example and, and I have my own feelings when it comes to kind of insurance and in part it you know being a gift a grift but here we are it's the you know you pay insurance for a reason right you know you hope you don't need to use the you know car insurance policy but if you do right so you've invested in that to be able to take care of you in the time of need and when we talk about the opening description of this 
uncertain was the word. It was only used once, but I still think there's power in it. We just don't know where we're going to end up. And I want to have to figure out as little as possible if we get there. You know. Right. And again, if we, and I hate to size it up as if like there is this destination, because as you've described early on, this is an issue today, now, right? (laughs) Period. You're living in every single piece of what we just talked about right now. Every single thing we've just talked about is occurring as we speak. Don't trip. No. Mm Mm-mm. Don't trip. Changing climate. Check. Growing global population. Check. In the time I just said that, 50 people were born. Rising food prices. Check, 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 check. All the way, I'd be writing checks all day long. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hopefully, they don't turn into t- Goodyear checks. Environmental stressors. Check, check. So, I mean, you, you know, you have all of these things occurring right now. <clears throat> now, when we talk about it, it's like, oh, shit. It's, all, it's coming to an end. That's it. It's done. We're moving on. But that's not really the case. It's just like a slow burn and it creeps up on you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then you go to the grocery store and eggs are seven dollars a dozen and a head of lettuce is four bucks. And you go to buy a seedling and it's five dollars for a cabbage plant. Oh, wait, that already happened. <laughs> um, you know, mm-hmm. so there's all these different things that are occurring and we're living in them right now. But by having a garden, you are off. So you have the ability to offset completely what you do so my suggestion for right now is plant something different Mm -hmm. practice on something different you know um if you have problems with something really hone in on it which by the way the little bastard on the next update i'm gonna have a solution that i think might be working so um that may be something and the little bastard is a squash fine bore i've honed in on that bitch again so hopefully i can get it under control but you know all of these things are occurring it's scary it doesn't have to be scary though because at the end of the day when i go to sleep at night i know that i'm doing what i can to make a difference for my family my friends if needed as much as i can and I, for me, it's a little bit different because with the podcast and the YouTube channel and stuff, you know, same with Batavia, we are, you know, we're giving people the opportunity to learn and do more. And mm-hmm. this conversation mm-hmm. that we are embarking on is a difficult one. It's kind of painful, but I believe that we're going to have some good stuff come out of this in the future. Mm-hmm. And I invite you to think about kind of where we are now in this series. And then if you haven't listened to some of the other series going back to earlier this year, I mean, we've covered off on a lot of information that feeds into this, you know, so we had a whole series about you should grow more, right? You know, being already mentioned the sustainable gardening series, we've had a series of mini sods where we talk about saving money, right? Like a part of what we're here to do is help give you tools, and we do that through our conversation. Yeah. Um, so uh, this isn't kind of this isn't closing out when it comes to, you know, this series. There's still so much more to explore. Um, but but we just have to dip in it tastefully. Yeah. You know what I mean? We can't just go all in and be like, this is it, everybody. You oh, know. no, I ha- I had a whole raunchy spiel set up for the second episode. But, well, we can know. get into that, too. <laughs> we'll have to discuss that in a minute. But um, look, everybody, we've gone over. I need to give you something special. I need to give you the recipe of the day. If you guys want some backyard gardens gear, go to the link below and check out our t-shirts, mugs, pint glasses, and other gear. All purchases go towards helping to support the show. So thank you so much in advance and we hope you enjoy. We want you to be a part of our gardening community. DM us a picture of your garden at Backyard Gardens TV on Instagram and we will share it with our listeners. All right, so we've talked about eggplants before. We did a You Should Grow on eggplants. Um, I believe that one is, was actually released on Patreon. So, you know, if you want to hear how to grow eggplants, go check that out. But we're going to tell you today how to make Italian sausage eggplant. So there's no sausage. It's only eggplant. 
This is an amazing way to use a plant that's very prolific, believe it or not. There's a lot of ingredients, as most vegan food has, which is kind of a pain in the ass, but you should have all of it, and I'll give you substitutes as we go. I use We make this a lot in our house. So you're going to want a quarter cup of olive oil, six 12-inch long Japanese eggplants peeled using a vegetable peeler. So you can either, if you have, if you're growing regular eggplants, you can just cut them thinly, slice them thinly, and just think in your head the size of the eggplant that you want to eat. You're going to need one teaspoon of ground fennel, one teaspoon of red pepper flakes, a teaspoon of sage, and then a teaspoon of Italian seasoning. So with Italian seasoning, you can just use oregano. You can just use thyme. It doesn't have to be a blend or anything like that. It's kind of a catch-all. You can use either one. Uh, You're going to want two teaspoons of salt, a half a teaspoon. I use a teaspoon, a whole teaspoon of cracked pepper, and then onion powder and garlic powder. Um, You can use whole garlic. doesn't matter. You can use fresh garlic. And then... If you want, so you're going to put all that in a bag and you're going to let it soak. Okay. You're just going to let it marinate in there. And what that's going to do is is the eggplant's going to absorb everything. Because if you've ever used eggplant, you know that it's a very absorbed, absorptive. Absorbent. Absorbent. Thank you. I think that may be wrong too, but we'll go with it. Yeah, we'll go with it. (laughs) So I'd leave it in, you know, you make it like an hour before something, let it sit. And then you can either put it in the grill, but it's actually better if you put it in a frying pan. And then you you fry it up or you grill it up, whatever you want. And then you take all the extra mixture that's in there and you pull it out and you rub it all over there. You can adjust the pepper flakes and make it as hot as you want. Uh, I I like to take... um, peppers and onions and then you know you can saute them and since this dish is so heavy in oil i actually water saute them which is when you put them in the pan they start to brown they start to stick you put a little water in then you do it again put a little bit more water in. do it again put a little bit more and it'll caramelize it and then you just put it on top put it with a hoagie roll whatever you want to do um i take it a step further and i use a high fiber high protein tortilla that we like to use um and we eat them that way with a spicy um, mustard and it's Mm. amazing it's absolutely amazing so everything that i told you you can grow in your garden and you can use it so think about it let's let's break it down real quick eggplants check it's, it's an easy one to grow, you know. Um, ground fennel. You can grow fennel if you want. I believe I've seen where fennel is actually very combative to a lot of plants. So, um, ground uh, tea spread pepper flakes. That's just ground up cayenne peppers. That's all mm-hmm. that is. Mm-hmm. Uh, sage. It's an herb. It should be in your herb garden. Oregano or thyme. That should be in your herb garden. Um, you know, the only thing is the salt. I can't mine salt. Actually, I could mm-hmm. where I live. I could dehydrate the water and capture the salt if I wanted, but I'm not... I'm not going there. Um, So, you know, onions and peppers you can grow. Listen to you. Like the full service uh, recipe of the day. Well, you know, this is something I've, I've, I've thought about doing it a couple times on the show and it's so complicated, but. I asked Batavia during the break, give me a vegetable. And she said Mm -hmm. eggplants. I said, okay. Mm -hmm. So that, there you go. Um, Good job. Yeah. Everybody enjoy it. It's it's very good. It's very tasty. And you can put like mozzarella cheese on it. If you're vegan, you could then put nutritional yeast on it if you wanted. And the nutritional yeast will actually add a little bit of protein to it. So there's that. Everything can be grown in the garden and consumed by you. I just dropped the mic. Yeah, don't do that. I don't want to buy another one. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah. In closing, how do you feel about the series shaping up so far? I I feel very good about it. We we talked about the when. We knew we wanted to do this, and we talked about when. Uh, and we are sitting kind of in the middle of what most of our garden seasons are. But this is just not something we want to push off, right? We want to uh-huh. be able to have this discussion. Um, and just, just be realistic, like, even after we get to episode three or four, it doesn't mean that's the end of when we'll mention this or talk about this in the future. Um, but I feel good that we've kind of set the stage. And that's what this intro episode really is intended to do. Yeah, it's about opening people's eyes, I think, and telling them, you know, this is what food security is. Because it's to me, it was kind of like an alien subject. You know what I mean? What is food security? I knew what it was, but 
when you first mention it's like what, what what is this crap we're talking about you know yeah let's demystify it a bit yeah right? but it's like, something that we all have control over to an mm-hmm. extent i mean we we've talked about how it's hard to grow all of your own food but i think growing to you know growing to make um to supplement is really mm-hmm. the key and that's mm-hmm. that's my whole mantra because i just feel like it's very unhealthy to come on any platform and say, you need to be growing all of your own food. Mm-hmm. This is what you need to be doing. I just don't feel like that is realistic. I don't feel like it's safe. And I feel like it's off-putting. And the last thing I would ever want to do is not encourage somebody to grow their own food for something as stupid as thinking, what good is it if I grow a little bit when I'm not mm-hmm. you know, not eating everything from my yard? Yeah. So, and I mean, if we go back to the August challenge real quick, I just want to say this. You can totally see how my garden's growing this year based off of that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, the, the different selections of plants and stuff and the tests that I'm doing, I felt was important to make a difference in what we were doing based off of that challenge, which in return feeds into this because, you know, I noticed deficiencies within that challenge yeah. in my life for what met my lifestyle it's individual your garden is individual it's for you it's for your family you should be growing what you want to grow and what you need out of your garden so i'm growing peanuts if you don't need peanuts don't grow in peanuts you know don't you you grow what you want to grow don't listen to anybody else i think that's the takeaway for me I mean, I feel like, are you going for one of the old school episodes where we're on here for 90 minutes? I, I feel like if you want to do that, we can do that on the community gardens after show. But um, no. Yeah. So everybody, Good final thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. Final thoughts. So everybody, thank you so much. Um, I hope we didn't scare the crap out of you. Um, and if we did, it might be a good thing. Maybe it's a wake up call. Maybe it's not. You know, um, we are living in weird times everything's uncertain stock markets crashing every day and then it's up and then it's down and all this stuff. So, you know, be prepared. The reason why we're doing this now is because you still have time to plant something in your garden again for the year and test something out. So mm-hmm. do here's your homework before next week, watch soil and green and figure out some plants that you can plant in your garden to get another harvest this summer. That's what you should be doing right now. How's that? Done. Done. Love you guys. See ya. We hope you enjoyed today's show. Please follow us on YouTube at Backyard Gardens TV. Instagram at Backyard Gardens TV. Over on our website, BackyardGardensTV.com. And then we have Patreon at Backyard Gardens. And don't forget to check out our links below to help the show. Thank you so much for joining us as we learn to grow and grow for change. Cut. Now you know why people feel like celebrating at harvest time. All over the world, people have feasting and good times when the crops have been gathered in. Hey, everybody. Thanks for checking out the Backyard Gardens podcast. If you like what we're doing and you want to continue to support the podcast, head over to our Patreon page to sign up. You can also make a one-time donation using PayPal. Both of these links are in the description. With your support, we can continue growing and helping others in their gardens. See ya. If you guys want some Backyard Gardens gear, go to the link below and check out our t-shirts, mugs, pint glasses, and other gear. All purchases go towards helping to support the show, so thank you so much in advance, and we hope you enjoy. We want everybody to have a garden, and we're going to give you a chance to win free seeds every month. Head over to BackyardGardensTV.com and enter your email address to be entered in all of our giveaways. Good luck! We want you to be a part of our gardening community. DM us a picture of your garden at Backyard Gardens TV on Instagram, and we will share it with our listeners.